Hey guys, Frank Cox here, the Barbecue Pit Engineer. Welcome to the Smoker Builder Podcast. On today's episode, I'm going to talk about, is it really a problem if your doors leak and is it important to fix it? So stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. I uh, got noisy over in the other room and I had to change rooms. But what I wanted to do is kind of go into, you know, is this even really a problem to have smoke leaking from your doors? So specifically, let's talk about what kind of smoker we're talking about. First of all, this is an offset smoker. Um, so like gravity feed doors and uh, cabinet smokers, stuff like that, you, you really should have those gasketed all the way. But on stick burners, on the other hand, Airflow is key on these smokers. It's a natural draft piece of equipment. We're under normal circumstances. We're not trying to put fans and things on these smokers. And so we're relying on Mother Nature pretty much for the whole process. We've got wood fire burning over a coal bed that has air moving across it somehow or even through it in some circumstances. And uh, we want to make sure that we're moving enough airflow. Here's a couple of things that people see that cause them to be worried about their doors leaking on a smoker. Um, number one would, I'm just doing this off the top of my head. So number one would be they literally see gaps in between whatever kind of door trim you have or cuts in the door that are too big, something like that, doors that are warped and out of whack. Those kind of things can, can be, you know, what you're seeing where the smoke comes out. Um, other things could be like even blowing backwards out of a firebox. So really, when we say door leaking, we really need to, first of all, consider which door we're talking about. Is it the cook chamber door or the firebox door? So when, once we get into that point, then we look at like what kind of smoke is leaking. Is it like really gray, wet, heavy white or like smoldering smoke or is it thin blue smoke? Like what is the color of the smoke? So you've heard me talk about smoke colors in the in other podcast episodes uh, on this Smoker Builder podcast before. It used to be the Pitmaster Secrets podcast, but we talk about uh, different colors of smoke when we're diagnosing a combustion-related issue. For instance, dirty smoke is more on the gray or white end of things, which is not always dirty, by the way. Sometimes white smoke is because there's a lot of steam in the smoke. And that can be caused by a multitude of things. But for the most part, like especially if you run a water pan in some kind of smoker, like a big water pan, and you're just piling the coals to it, you get that water boiling and you'll have blue smoke coming out that might have some white in it. And that white, you can tell by holding your hand over it, um, don't burn yourself, of course, which you probably won't anyway, but hold your hand over it you would feel the condensation sticking to your hand as it comes out and that's a lot of moisture in your smoke but white smoke can also just be smoldery right the more gray it is the dirtier it is regardless if you have that happening instead of thin blue smoke you've got issues with combustion and pit design and all kinds of stuff your big issue is not doors right so when we get into thin blue smoke leaking out of your doors, is this really a problem? Well, on the firebox door, yes, it is a problem. You should not have backdrafting happening in your pit, right? So if you see smoke coming out of your firebox door or out of the damper on the firebox, what's happening is, and it can be periodic, that's not really a problem, but if it's constant, like you constantly have smoke leaking out of your firebox door, that's an indication that your pit is not drafting correctly. What happens is you, you might have blue smoke in this scenario because you've got such a big fire that, that it's, it's and probably a lot of air going to this fire and you've got a leaking door. You might actually even be pulling air from the cook chamber back into the firebox, which is pushing air out of the firebox. So what this is, this is a scenario I did a YouTube video on it. If you go to youtube.com and then check out Smoker Builder on there, that's my channel. Go back, I don't know, last fall maybe, something like that. And there's a video of me sitting in front of a smoker. And you'll see on the thumbnail, you'll see smoke coming out of my pinwheel damper. In that case, we're talking about wind direction. 
So my pit is always sized correctly, of course, you know, because I'm designing it myself and I do this for a living, right? But what happened in that video was in front of my garage, there's a weird swirl to the wind and you don't get a constant wind direction. Sometimes it blows out of the west, which is facing my garage door. And when the, when the wind hits that door with the door closed, it has to pick a direction. And it just depends on how the wind whips, which direction it goes. It might go south, it might go north, but regardless, it's going to go one way for a little while, and then it's going to change directions and go the other way across my pit. And you just talk about chasing your tail. You can't you can't get control over wind direction in that scenario. You got to move the pit, right? So that is one way that backdrafting is caused, which can cause air to come out of your firebox. The other catch is, is that for some reason, you're not getting enough air out of the firebox into the cooking chamber. And therefore, the cooking chamber is not getting hot enough to suck the draw. Smokestack needs to get hot. Cooking chamber needs to get hot. A cold pit will not draw. So if you have smoke that is like, in that case, you're going to have more on the smolder end of things too. You're going to have white, gray, maybe a gray blue or heavy blue. Like thin blue smoke is what we're looking for, not heavy blue smoke. But there should be a blue color to it, right? In my opinion, clear smoke is a bit too clean for me. I don't like I don't like a clear smoke personally. A lot of the reverse flow guys will uh, will tell you that this thing is drawn perfect. I see so many people post pictures of that perfect, but I mean honestly, if you really look at the flavor profile in your food. Unless you get into that thin blue smoke range where you can see blue color, you're not going to get that flavor depth of that smoke. You might get surface on like the sauce or whatever it is, and that might be plenty for you. That might be what you like. But for my personal preference, I like it to get down. I like to get some penetration in that meat, right? That's the whole point of hitting that at a lower temperature up until it gets to 140. Besides trying to render fat and get that yellow good, that good rendered yellow broke down fat color in your brisket, you know, so, you know, it's been properly, properly rendered, you know, but anyway, so in this case right here, what we're talking about is that your cook chamber, some kind of issue there with either your stack is too small, your uh, throat opening is too small. It could even be that your your smokestack attachment, let's you can use a collector box, an elbow, it doesn't matter. Something with that is restricted. And side note here, I've even seen one time that a guy burned dirty smoke for so long in his pit that it built up, it was a four inch diameter stack, and it built up so much soot inside of that uh, smokestack that it closed it down to two inches diameter throughout. Like, I'm talking dirty fire. So it may have worked fine at one time, but over a period of time, that stack built up full of full of soot and just debris and all the junk that's in that dirty smoke, and it wound up closing it off. So now you don't have any smokestack volume because we've displaced it with all the soot buildup that was in there. So yeah, something in that airstream, something with the design, your, your throat opening is too small, Maybe it's big enough, but you've got something else in the way, like this big old baffle that's too far closed. Like some guys will put a baffle in and tilt it down so that it pushes the smoke down. Well, you could even make that to where the opening around this, the perimeter, if you're not looking at the video, I'm moving my hands around the profile of the bottom of your tank and where that baffle plate comes out on an offset, you know, that, that could be closed off. Um, if it's a reverse flow, it could be the thro- the baffle plate gap could be too tight. So there's a whole list of issues that can cause smoke to come out of your firebox, right? But let's go into the cook chamber doors. Let's just say that you don't have any of these firebox issues at all. You're cooking phenomenal barbecue, but you just don't like to see smoke coming out your door. Is it really a problem? In my opinion, it is not a problem. There is no problem here unless your smoke is dirty. If your smoke is dirty, you need to diagnose a combustion issue of some kind or an airflow issue of some kind, or even wood. If your wood is rotted or wet or uh, too big of chunks, like I don't like to be, I don't throw a six inch diameter log on my fire. I'm splitting that thing up into probably two more, three more pieces. 
so that I get smaller diameter chunks in there that'll get combusted more evenly. You, you're just looking at how many pounds of wood per hour am I burning and how consistent are the, is the size of that wood. Because at the end of the day, how much fuel we put in the pit has a big bearing on how much, how our temperature runs in the pit. So, but if, like I say, if you've got big smoldering gray smoke coming out of your cook chamber, there's some other issue. Parentheses, it could also be that your pit is cold because you just started it up, so don't freak out yet. Get the pit up to temp. Your smoke will start to get blue or thin blue. Then everything is fine. As long as you've got that blue color of smoke and you're making temperature in your cook chamber and you got the right draw, like let's say your food is cooked evenly, there is no problem here. If your fire is bigger, that's okay. Don't worry about like, that. honestly, it's not a big deal to throw more wood and more coals at the fire unless you're just trying to scrimp and save and not burn a bunch of wood up because you can't get oak or you can't get the kind of wood you want or something like that, you know. Fire management in this case, there's really not a problem with the pit. Those are all fire management issues. Bigger coal bed, you know, stacks of wood on there, whatever it is. But if you have thin blue smoke your and your barbecue looks good and it's cooking evenly and all of the above check boxes are checked off and your doors leak, don't get bent out of frame about it. And just to tell you how serious I am about that and how I put that into practice in my own pit, bingo. So I, I like, bingo is my favorite pit I probably ever built in my whole life. And if you don't know what bingo is, um, go through my Instagram profile um, or go to Facebook, smokerbuilder.com, Facebook page. And uh, that's our business page. And look back through the history of pictures of my pit bingo. Matter of fact, this weekend is, uh, what is this, almost the end of June. And uh, I was uh, up in South Dakota cooking this weekend, and I posted a bunch of pictures of that with the door open and stuff and a bunch of briskets on there. And what I did when I built that pit, I wanted the flexibility of having the full cook chamber open. Well, just like the pit behind me here, this is Mr. Boyd's pit, uh, Aaron, and he did exactly the same thing. He wants this whole entire cook chamber to be able to be opened, but he also doesn't want to have, he wants this door split. He doesn't want one big door. So what we do, or what we've done on these last couple builds for ourselves is we went ahead and cut two doors, cut that door into two pieces, but we don't have a split in the middle. There's nothing in between them. So what we used to do in the past was put a piece of trim inside one door. Well, now we've got a primary and a slave door, which basically what that means is, is that we have the first door that we open and then the secondary door that we open afterwards. In order to get the secondary door, let's say the right-hand door open, you'd have to open the left-hand door first. That frustrates me. I don't like that. I should have just put one big door on it, right? If that's what I got to do. So instead, we just omit any kind of thing in the middle of that. There's just an eighth inch gap in between those doors. And let me tell you, it smokes for a little bit when you start to pit up. But once that draw gets established in the pit, you get the whole cook chamber heated up and we cook at a hotter temp. We're cooking somewhere above 250, 275, you know, 250 to 300 is typically where we're cooking at the cooking grade level. So we're running a pretty good fire. I mean, it's it's not massive, but it's a big fire. So what happens is, is that when you first start the pit up, bingo's cold. It's going to take a little bit, and you're going to have smoke leaking out the doors on the cook chamber, no matter what you do. Once that pit, and even out of the firebox, because I use my firebox door as the air inlet. So when I open that, I open my door on the firebox to get air to my fire. Sure, some smoke is going to leak out of there. Not a big deal. I'm going to tell you why here in a minute. But we get blue smoke or whatever coming out those cracks and stuff like that. So up until the point when the pit gets hot. But here's the benefit to that. If I can get a bigger amount of air to flow through the pit and I can maintain a good coal bed and a sizable fire, right? That's going to enable me to throw more wood on my fire. It's going to also allow me to uh, to get that blue smoke that I'm after that's going to continually run through my pit and give me that thin blue 
awesome barbecue flavor that I want in Thin Blue Smoke. So otherwise, like Mac, for instance, that's one of my pits I built back in the day. And honestly, that pit was way too efficient. Like that's the, that's the engine, the barbecue engineer side of me coming out in spades right there, because like we fine tuned that pit to the point where you could literally set a watch. If I had some automated mechanism and every X minutes it put a log on the fire, I would not have to go back out there because that thing, I would not have to do anything to it. Mac ran by himself pretty much. The only thing he needed me for was to put a piece of wood on every 45 minutes on the dot. If I wanted to run 300 or 225 or 400, I could change the tune on that pit at any moment and boom, we were there, right? Add more fuel, open up the air a little bit, anything like that. But that pit, I had to minimize the size of that fire and I could not break the coal bed up. Because as soon as somebody threw a log on or I hit the coals or something like that and broke those coals up, instantly our BTU capacity went through the ceiling and I couldn't get control unless I shoveled coals out of the firebox. So you literally could not do that because now we had, our, instead of the surface area of the log that's turned to charcoal burning, now we've got all of the surface area of the charcoal that got broke up on the surface area with surface area of that fire. So the same amount of air, more fuel, and it's super pure charcoal because we just made it in the firebox, right? Our wood turned into charcoal. So now we, we, get, we got too big of a coal bed. Our cooker overshoots temp. The only way you can, and it's an insulated firebox. So the only way I can get it back down is to physically shovel coals out of there. So what I like to do is a concept we call sweat heat. Just like your body sweats to get rid of heat out of your body, we want to do the same thing with this pit. I want a high heat of rejection so that I, and that's the rejection like going from radiant heat out of the cooking chamber, right? Or from the exhaust or from every time you open the door and close it. I want to get enough heat waste going through this pit. I just want to waste it because if I can waste that, it's an easier fire management I don't have to worry about overstoking that fire. And I'm going to maintain blue smoke the entire time. As long as I have a flame, well, that's the other thing, is when you burn charcoal, you can't really have a flame. You've basically got black and white charcoal. The charcoal is primarily turning white, which is the cleanest flame you can have. And you're not really going to have a flame. It's just going to be like a lot of heat coming off of that charcoal. Think about a charcoal grill when it's cooking wide open on a Weber and you look down in there and there's no flame until you put wood on it or stir the coals, right? So that's the super hottest you can get that fire. I don't want that scenario. I want to be able to throw a split on every 45 minutes. I want to see that thing catch on fire. I want to see flames through my door the entire time I'm cooking. And in order to achieve that, I've got to get rid of this heat somewhere, but I can't do, I, I still have to have enough heat that I can deliver hot air and smoke to the meat in the cooking chamber. At that point, we're fine. So anyway, I don't know if this was helpful or not. If your doors are leaking, but your barbecue is great, you have no problem. Go back to whatever you were doing. If, however, your firebox is leaking like big, white, gray, heavy smoke, or uh, you have terrible fire management issues, or your food tastes like soot or something like that, then you got an issue, and hopefully this video helped you solve that. So let me know in the comments if you found value in this. By the way, we have this new website called smokerbuilderu.com. That's the letter U, smokerbuilder, the letter U.com. And if you go over there, I hear some noise back there, sorry. If you go over there to that website, you can sign up for free. It's basically like a Facebook group, but you're not on Facebook. It's private just to us. And we don't let anybody in there that's going to cause a bunch of riffraff. It's a safe place for barbecue guys that are serious about building pits and cooking on them. If you want to join our community and learn from them, uh, hop on over there right now. It's free to sign up. There's other stuff coming in the future, like some courses and things like that that'll be on there. So early access gets it best. So anyway, uh, if you go on over there right now and sign up, I'd appreciate it, and uh, let me know in the comments here if you found value or if you need anything else from me. Appreciate you. Thanks.